Hello everyone, welcome to Winocon 2020 hosted by Berkeley Valencia. I'm Ankit Malik and I will be presenting a workshop on MaxMSP, a visual programming language for music and multimedia developed and maintained by San Francisco-based software company Cycling74. We will be building a sample sequencer. For that to work, we will need to assemble a few components. We will need a method by which we can load samples. We shall need a method by which we can trigger samples. We will need a gain control mechanism. a transport or a method of counting time, some form of a pattern and step randomization feature, a grid for pattern creation, visualization and editing, and an output, an audio output from the programming environment. I've prepared some samples which I will load into the Max environment. You can load any samples that you want. Loading drum one shots is probably a good idea at this point. The samples all load in a single playlist tilde object. I'm also going to bring up some message boxes by pressing the M key on the keyboard. We will use these message boxes to trigger the samples loaded into this playlist tilde object. Type in the numbers 1, 2, and 3 into separate message boxes. Then connect the outlet of the message box to the inlet of the playlist tilde object. Clicking on a box will trigger the corresponding sample inside the playlist tilde object. Let's load live.gain tilde object. This will allow us to visualize and control the level of the samples. Connect the first and second outlet of the playlist tilde object to the first and second inlet of the live.gain tilde object. Let's load the DAC tilde object and give it the arguments of 1, 2, 3, and 4. This initializes the object to have four channels of audio being sent out from the max environment. Connect the first and second outlet of the live.gain tilde object to the first and second inlet of the DAC object. I'm also going to connect the third and fourth inlet of DAC tilde with the first and second outlet of live.gain, but I'm doing so in order to send audio out from my interface back into OBS, which is the recording software I'm using to record this current session. Clicking on the numbered message boxes will enable us to listen to the samples through our speakers. You can also use the object EasyDAC tilde for the same purpose. For that, you have to connect the first and second outlet of live gain object with the respective inlets of the EasyDAC object. Now that the samples are all loaded, we can build a system which will drive our sample sequencer. Pressing T on the keyboard will bring up a toggle box which can be used as a switch to turn on or off certain objects. Now let's bring up the Metro object and connect it with the toggle object and also give it an argument of 100. This argument ensures that the Metro object outputs a bang every 100 milliseconds. Let's also load an integer box and connect it to the right inlet of the Metro object. Let's load a random object and give it an argument of 6. This will generate a random number between 0 and 5 every time the random object is sent to bang from the Metro object. Then connect the random object to an addition object with the value of 1. Then connect the output of the addition object to the inlet of the playlist tilde object. actually sound quite musical depending on your taste. I'm going to set up an interface with which I can start and stop the metro object with ease without having to use my mouse every time. For that, we need the key object. 
The next step is to connect the first outlet of the key object to the cell or select object after giving it an argument of 32. Select outputs a bang in response to any input which matches its argument and outputs non-matching messages out its rightmost outlet. Connect the left outlet of the select to the inlet of the trigger object. Pressing the spacebar should start and stop the metro object. Let's establish another number generator, but this time we'll generate something which is a little more linear in nature. For this, we will use the counter object with the arguments of 1 and 6. Counter will count upwards from 1 to 6, and the rate of counting will depend on the bangs received by the first inlet of the counter object. Connecting the metro to the counter object will complete this linear number generator. You can take a moment now to listen to the difference between using counter and random as number generators. Can you notice anything interesting, especially when the two outlets are connected at the same time? You might notice that this current approach makes the sequence monophonic. That is, only one sample plays at a given instance of time. In order to make this sequencer polyphonic, we'll have to introduce a few more elements to this patch. Time for some quick housekeeping. Let's load up a live.grid object. This loads up a user interface with selectable rows and columns, which will function as our grid. Connect the counter object to the live.grid object. Change the count maximum value of the counter object to 16. This will correspond to the 16 steps in our sequencer. We will also need to make a few changes to the UI of the live.grid object before we continue patching more. Click on the UI and press Command I on your keyboard. This will display the inspector window. Change row marker value to zero, the number of rows to four. Turn on matrix mode, turn off display directions panel. I also changed the roundness of the grid, but you can opt to skip that step. I have to make a correction. The number of rows are six which correspond to the samples we loaded earlier. Patch the outlet of live.grid to the inlet of playlist tilde. Pressing spacebar should start the sequencer. you will notice that the samples are still not being recorded polyphonically. The next few steps will resolve this issue. We go back to our sample library and load each sample in its own individual playlist. Time for some quick housekeeping. Make the necessary connections between the playlist tilde objects and their respective gain objects. Load up a message object and type in 1. Then make 6 copies of the object and connect them to the 6 different playlist tilde object. Load a select object and enter 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Connect the either and select objects together. Then connect the first 6 outlets of the select object to the first inlets of the message boxes. Program a pattern in the grid and press space after locking the patcher window. Try out some different patterns at this point. Let's tidy up the patch a bit. Select all these objects and press Command, Shift, and E all together on your keyboard. This will encapsulate the selected objects inside a subpatcher. Name the subpatcher something appropriate. Creating subpatchers is a very good way of keeping your patches clean and concise, and it helps in conserving estate area, especially when you don't have large screens to work with. 
although the metro object is generally useful for metronomic usage, a better method is to use the phaser tilde object. This object allows for sample accurate control and timing tasks. Using the at lock one attribute synchronizes the phaser to the global transport of the max environment. Using the tempo relative time format syntax, we can set the object to emit bangs every note, or in our case, every 16th note of the metronome. Let's load the transport object and then right click on the left inlet. This will display a menu with several options. Select the tempo option. Also connect the trigger object to the transport object. This will allow us to activate and deactivate the transport object. We can also set up the metro object to follow the global transport. This is done by using the same tempo relative time format syntax and setting the active attribute to 1. The output of phaser tilde is a signal at audio rate. We need to convert that signal into a bang message for counter and random to understand and interpret it and function as expected. The output of phaser tilde is an audio signal which is ramping from 0 to 1. The signal is sent to delta tilde which outputs a signal representing the differences between each incoming sample value of the input signal. The less than tilde object compares the value of the delta signal with the given value of negative 0.5. The less than tilde object outputs one signal when the left input is less than the value we've entered and a zero signal when it is greater or equal to the value which we've entered. The edge tilde object detects a zero to non-zero signal transition and vice versa. It reports a bang out of its two outlets depending on the direction of the signal transition. This signal chain converts the ramp output of the phaser tilde object to the required bang message. Time for some more housekeeping and probably another time lapse. We can replace the metro object with the signal chain ending with the edge tilde object. We can also encapsulate that signal chain and clean up the patch further. At this point, the sequencer is almost complete. We can also use the earn object, which is similar to the random object. The earn object outputs random numbers and keeps track of each number that has been generated. Once all the numbers up to the maximum have been output, a bang is sent out the right outlet. We will use this bang message to trigger another clear message. The output of that clear message will be sent to the left inlet of the earn object. This ensures that the earn object resets every time it has generated all possible numbers. This creates a pseudo-random sequence, which is different from the complete randomness of the random object. Let's create a switch which allows us to select between the output of counter, random, and earn. Load a G-switch object which selects an output from two or more inlets. Change the number of its inputs to 3 by right-clicking the first inlet and selecting the Inputs option. Connect the objects as depicted. Now create a U-menu object. This will allow us to select between the three different number generating options. Connect the leftmost outlet of the U-menu to the leftmost inlet of the G-switch object. Then select the U-menu object and open the inspector window. Edit the menu items as depicted. Let's create another U-menu object and connect its leftmost inlet to the second left inlet of the counter object. Open inspector window and change the menu items as depicted.
We can also set up message boxes which can randomize and reset the step information in the grid. Take some time to explore these options modifying the grid. Consider how these can be used and applied in a creative manner. Now let's set up the patch for presentation. Presentation mode allows us to get rid of all the connections and wires, which cleans up the visual aspect of the GUI significantly. It also reduces CPU usage to a certain degree actually. Select all the user interface objects which you deem relevant. Then right click on them and select the option add to presentation. Click the button for presentation mode and the view changes completely. Arrange the objects in a discernible manner as you see fit. Working with presentation mode is useful when you're performing with this patch or any other patch in Max as it helps in utilizing resources much better. Now you can modify this patch as you see fit by including more samples or longer sequences or other forms of random number generation. Your creativity is your limit. And that's a wrap. If you visit the website link at the end of this video, then you can download this patch for free. There are two more parts to this series of tutorials which I'll be uploading to my website. If you're interested, then check out my website www.spiralink.com and follow me on Instagram as Spiralink. Thanks for tuning in to Enocon.